Welcome to the Real Estate Guys radio program. I'm your host, Robert Helms. The way we learn about everything is changing. And today we're back in Rapid City, South Dakota, talking with a new breed of educators. And we're gonna discuss the changing landscape and role of education. We've got four awesome guests on the Real Estate Guys radio program. Registration is now open for the Real Estate Guys 20th Annual Investor Summit. Imagine spending an entire week with like-minded investors, world-class educators, and real-world professionals. Returning in 2022, the editor of the Gold Newsletter, Brian London, international real estate developer, Beth Clifford, the author of The Creature from Jekyll Island, G. Edward Griffin, Jim Rohn's 18-year business partner, Kyle Wilson, and the rebel capitalist, George Gammon. And joining us live and in person for his 10th Investor Summit, best-selling author and the Rich Dad Advisor for Real Estate, Ken McElroy. Plus, lots more to be announced. It all begins June 10th, 2022 in beautiful Belize. Visit realestateguysradio.com and click the tab that says Summit to reserve your spot. Go to realestateguysradio.com, click Summit, and make plans to spend a week with the Real Estate Guys, George Gammon, Ken McElroy, and an all-star faculty on the 20th Annual Investor Summit on Sand. Welcome to the Real Estate Guys radio program. I'm your host, Robert Helms, and joining me as usual, it's our financial strategist and co-host, Russell Gray. Hey, Robert. This week, he's also a master at working the exhibit trade show floor, something that Russ is really good at. We're here in South Dakota at Freedom Fest, week two of our broadcast from Freedom Fest, and uh, lots to learn, lots of amazing people to meet. You know, we come to these events because we want to have our mind expanded. We want to be reminded of the importance of freedom, liberty, if you will. Most people want to make money, become wealthy, financially independent, because they want freedom, financial freedom. And they think that money is the ticket to freedom. Well, you know, you can make the argument that money without wealth, you're not that free. And of course, money without freedom, you're really not that free. And, you know, when you think about things like eviction moratoriums and some of the things that we've talked about in the past, the reality is, is that we have to be vigilant, not just to manage our portfolio, but to manage the society, if you will. And it doesn't have to be political because we have our own responsibility with our own network, with our own children. For those of us that are raising children or teachers, influencing children, the point is, is how you look at the world affects the way you choose to invest and the opportunities that you see and the world that you are going to be living in. Last week, we brought you quite a variety of folks with different opinions and perspectives. This week, it's a little more focused in that our topic today is the changing landscape and role of education. And the folks we're going to meet today on the exhibit hall floor are all people that are working in the educational space one way or another. For years, our motto has been education for effective action. The idea that before you go do something, you have to get educated. The classic version of that is to go to school and get a degree and get a job. All the things that Robert Kiyosaki blew up and Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And really what's happened is that the way people learn hasn't changed that much, but the methodology for delivering it is rapidly being disrupted. Yeah, you've got a couple of different things going on. If you think back into the original days where you grew up in a family, you worked on a farm, you worked in a, in a local family business, you didn't learn by learning, you learned by doing. And then you iterated, and that's kind of the model of having an, a mentor. We're big fans of mentoring. You know, in our syndication program, it's people starting syndication businesses and learning by doing it and having a mentor there to help them along the way. The best real estate investing programs work that way. You know, you don't learn to ride a bike by sitting there watching videos of people riding a bike, by reading a textbook on how to ride a bike, by understanding the biomechanics of riding a bike. You get a mentor who knows how to ride a bike and gets you out there, puts you on a bike and, and, and pushes you along through all the ups and downs, the spills, and just make sure that you don't ride out in the middle of the street and get run over. Well, that, that can be true in a lot of things. So fundamentally, humans learn a certain way. Somewhere along the way, we turned it into a factory model where we put them through these, you know, this industrialized process, very specialized niche marketing. And a funny thing has happened is the world has opened up with the internet and workforces are more diverse and it's less manufacturing, less industrial, but more informational, more IP, if you will. Uh, and the way people are working together, you know, to your point, Robert, with the technology has kind of changed. And so the whole concept of what is college, what is college worth, 
Uh, is it worth it? Uh, is being revisited? And of course, I have a different perspective. You know, we homeschooled our children, which was an interesting experience. And then we mentored, you know, I mentored my children into the business world. And that was a whole process, very different way of learning. You know, my kids, most of my kids didn't go to college. I didn't go to college. Uh, I learned by being mentored and I, I prefer it. I think it's a better way to learn. It's a more effective way to learn. But I think right now, the point is it's an alternative way to learn. And right now the world is looking for alternatives to all institutions, which are largely not keeping up with the changing world that we live in. I'm guessing this isn't the only real estate podcast you've heard. And so a way people will learn about real estate investing is getting educated through podcasts. My 16-year-old is amazing at the piano. His teacher, YouTube. He's completely self-educated on the piano and he's masterful. So there's no lack of needing education in order to do well in any industry, in any vocation, you need to be schooled, but you don't necessarily have to go to school in a building. If COVID has taught us anything, it's that we can be productive outside of the classroom, outside of community education, outside of the norm. And so today we're going to hear from folks starting from a gentleman that's helping younger people grasp ideas all the way into middle school and high school. We hope you're going to enjoy today's show live from South Dakota on the Real Estate Guys radio program. Real estate investment advice right in your mailbox. Sign up for the free Real Estate Guys newsletter at realestateguysradio.com. Hey, this is Brad Sumrock, and there's something I'm super excited about that's coming down in just a few days. It's the Invest in Apartments Now Challenge. Now is an amazing time with the tax advantages and the interest rates being so low and the demographics that are shifting with more and more people renting. Plus, we're gonna have some amazing speakers. We're gonna have billionaires. We're gonna have people that have invested millions of dollars of their earned income sharing with you how investing in apartments now is moving the needle for them personally. So this is an event that you certainly want to be at. It's free. Five days, 60 to 90 minutes per day. I'll see you in the Invest in Apartments Now Challenge. Join the Apartment King, Brad Sumrock, in the free Invest in Apartments Now Challenge. To get the details, send an email to apartmentchallenge at realestateguysradio.com. Discover the world of apartment investing. I'll be there. Will you? Send an email to apartmentchallenge at realestateguysradio.com. Hi, this is Lawrence, your chief economist with National Association of Realtors, and you are listening to The Real Estate Guys. Welcome back to The Real Estate Guys radio program. Now in our 25th year of broadcast, we're talking today about the changing role and responsibility of educators in education. The way people learn is different. We'll meet a man who's been helping folks at a young age learn some really important concepts. Let's say hello to Connor Boyack. Hey, Connor. Hey, thanks for having me on. Thanks for being here. Many of our listeners are already familiar with the Tuttle Twins. Yes, it's sir. an amazing series of books that you and your partner put together. Tell us the origin of the Tuttle Twins. So the origin is Elijah and I, Elijah's the illustrator. We were dads of young kids about eight years ago and found ourselves wanting to talk to our kids about the ideas that we were passionate about, free markets and private property rights and all these things. Yep. And uh, I went on Amazon one day trying to find what books are out there that could help me talk to my kids about this. There's books about sex ed and the birds and the bees. I thought, surely there must be books that talk about free markets and you know economics and so forth. There was nothing. Right. And so he and I teamed up on doing a book and it was just a labor of love. It was just a fun little test. We actually came to Freedom Fest seven years ago and had a booth for our first book. The response was phenomenal. And so that to us was a market signal that, hey, there's an opportunity here. We kept going. Now we sold two and a half million copies. We're doing a cartoon. We do this in about a dozen languages. It's, it's taken off beyond our wildest imagination. Well, it's great because it's engaging. Kids love it, understand it, follow the story, but they're learning. And some of the big feedback is that the parents are learning as much as the kids. That was surprising to us. Uh, a lot of these parents, they feel like they love the values of freedom or they support free markets, but they don't know any economic theory. They don't know about, you know, what's spontaneous order or any of this kind of stuff. And so, or even like investing and getting into finance, a lot of these parents struggle because they themselves were never taught, usually in public school, about these ideas. So then they feel ill-equipped in teaching their kids about them. So enter the Tuttle Twins books where parents and children together at whatever economic literacy they're at or illiteracy as the case may be, they can read these fun stories that share these concepts in a new and engaging but fun way. 
and suddenly parents and children can talk about this around dinner and it makes sense to the kids. It's not this weird abstract financial you know, investment idea or this economic theory or whatever. It's this story that they understand. They saw in the story how these ideas play out and it creates kind of a family literacy of, uh, about these ideas that they can talk about together. You know, we were at Freedom Fest when you guys debuted, and a few months later, I think it was, we had a gentleman uh, who came and brought some of the books to our annual event. You know, it's that whole recognition, oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah. And then little by little, it starts to be in more and more places. Right. Talk about what happens from here. Sure. Yeah, no, we're we're excited for world domination. Uh, <laughs> well, you know, the cartoon for us is new. That's at TuttleTwins.tv. The idea there is the books are mostly educational with a little bit of entertaining stuff woven in to make them enjoyable for kids. The cartoon is going to be mostly entertaining, just yeah. a fun cartoon with a little bit of educational, you know, idea along the way. So we reach a lot more people with the cartoon. When they see the cartoon, it's like, hey, come read the books and you can learn even more. You know, we've got a podcast, we've got a game, we got a curriculum, we're gonna be doing way more books. Basically our goal is no matter the age of your child or how they like to learn, if they prefer audiobooks or a cartoon or reading in a book, we wanna be able to have something to offer for all children so they can be exposed and introduced to these important ideas that make our world a great place. Well, this brings up a really interesting point because people do learn in different ways. And the kids that do well in traditional school are the people that learn reading and writing and yet there are people on their devices today. So being able to approach from different angles yeah. is critical. So yeah. we're excited about what you guys are doing. Thank you, we're having a blast. And another thing that's really fun for us is that these ideas are not just American ideas. Uh, we translate, as I said, earlier into a dozen languages. We have thousands and thousands of books being distributed right now in Germany, in Italy, in Venezuela, in Brazil, all over the place. And with the cartoon being translated as well, once it's released, I get so excited by knowing about, you know, in some village in Africa, they can watch for free on their mobile device, this cartoon that's gonna teach them about entrepreneurship and free market economics. And they're gonna get the wheels turning and be able to kind of pull themselves up by the bootstraps and make their life better, the life of their community members better. It's, these are empowering ideas. I've seen how they work in so many of our readers, but uh, I get really excited thinking about third world countries, developing nations, all the, these things that we know what these ideas did here in America in the early colonial era when we had this really free market and all this kind of innovation entrepreneurship. This is what can make the whole world better. It's what can benefit families. And so we're really excited to get the word out. If you've not heard of the Tuttle Twins, then uh, people are gonna wanna find out whether you have kids or grandkids. So Connor, quick aside, good friend of ours, G. Edward Griffin, wrote yep. The Creature from Jekyll Island. You, in fact, have a Tuttle Twins book about that. That's absolutely right. Uh, that book was very informative for me and kind of uh, learning about central banking and inflation and fiat currency and the rest. Um, and so we wanted to honor his efforts in spreading the word about those ideas. And so we have our own version, the Tuttle Twins and the Creature from Jekyll Island, where we teach those same ideas, especially today when the Fed is printing so much money and devaluing our currency. We've seen around the world what hyperinflation or even just steady inflation can do. So that book in particular is one that I think is extremely relevant for today. And uh, I know a lot of our listeners are familiar with uh, Ed Griffin's work. Uh, you've made a pretty cool offer to the listeners. Yeah. So if you go, uh, you're going to share the email address. What we're going to do is provide you with a free activity workbook that goes along with our creature from Jekyll Island book. And then at TuttleTwins.com, when you get the book, you'll be able to learn more about these ideas. All right. All you have to do is send an email to Tuttle Twins. It's spelled like it sounds. T-U-T-T-L-E Twins. Tuttle Twins at realestateguysradio.com. And uh, you'll get that information plus be able to connect to all the great titles. And I'm sure there are more on the way. Absolutely. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Connor. Thanks for being Appreciate here. Appreciate it. You're tuned to the Real Estate Guys radio program. I'm your host, Robert Helms. Live nationwide, you're listening to the Real Estate Guys. Find out more at realestateguysradio.com. The Real Estate Guys are throwing a party and you're invited. Join us live at the New Orleans Investment Conference, October 19th through 22nd. Now in its 47th year, it's the nation's longest running investment conference and features some of the biggest names in economics and investing, including Jim Rickards, Ron Paul, Danielle DiMartino Booth, Rick Rule, Doug Casey, James Grant, Peter Schiff, and George Gannon. And of course, the Real Estate Guys are speaking again this year, plus we're hosting a private hospitality suite one of the evenings with some very special guests. So make plans to join the Real Estate Guys at the New Orleans Investment Conference. 
With everything going on in the world, no serious investor can afford to miss it. Send an email to New Orleans at realestateguysradio.com and we'll get you all the details. That's New Orleans at realestateguysradio.com. If you love real estate and have always wanted to own your own business, listen up. The Real Estate Guys and their panel of experts want to teach you how to go full-time fast in the real estate syndication business. These next few years may go down in history as one of the best times ever to acquire investment real estate. There are deals everywhere if you know where to look and how to assemble the resources. The Secrets of Successful Syndication Seminar will show you how to make big money doing big deals from a team of experts that have syndicated projects totaling more than $1 billion. Don't wait for someone to give you a raise or create a job for you. Attend the secrets of successful syndication and learn how to build a team, raise capital, find deals, and make full-time money in six months or less. Go to realestateguysradio.com and click on events. All the big players use syndication as a way to diversify risk, optimize profits, and earn big money. You can too. Go to realestateguysradio.com and click on events. Hi, this is Tom Wheelwright best-selling author of Tax Free Wealth, and you're listening to Real Estate Guys Radio. Welcome back to the Real Estate Guys Radio program. Heard every weekend on this great radio station all the time at realestateguysradio.com. We're talking about something a little different today, the changing face of education. And where does it start with the young folks? Let's say hello to Daniel Harmon. How are you? I'm well. Thanks for having me on. It's good to have you here. You have an amazing project, and uh, we've talked about the Tuttle Twins, which is a really cool way to teach children about economic principles and things like that. And uh, you have crowdfunded a television show. Tell us about it. Yeah, it starts with the book series it's based on. Yep. So the Tuttle Twins book series by Connor Boyack and, and Elijah Stan Stanfield, it has um, sold over 2.5 million copies. And it teaches kids about concepts of economics and freedom. Yep. And it, may, it does it in a really clear way. And we're taking those principles um, and we are making it into a kid show, um, an animated TV series. Uh, we've got 12 episodes of the first season funded now through crowdfunding. Yep. Um, uh, $3.7 million that we were able to raise to the crowd, and that's all investors, it's not um, donation. And so there's a real void in the market for this kind of thing where parents are really craving something to teach their kids um, a better foundation of uh, concepts of free markets and economics. And so that's why they're turning to this. And talk about the target age group for this program. About eight to 12. Yeah, was, we, we noticed that it still has a lot of appeal down to five-year-olds and that kind of thing, but um, eight to 12 is kind of our target. And it's animated, so it's animated. do you have a background in that or did you put all that together? Talk about that part of it. In college, I actually was studying animation before I went into advertising. I ended up pursuing a career in, in advertising and um, learning a lot about content creation in that way before I came back to this. So this is kind of like coming full circle for me because it's the first time I've ever directed um, an animated TV show. But yeah, it's 2D animation where the vision for the show is to make it, make it be entertaining by itself as a story for kids where they'll choose to watch it over their options on things like um, Netflix, Disney Plus, and YouTube just as entertainment and then be educated along the way. So we're trying to have it, you know, it, it, incorporate comedic elements like what you would see in The Simpsons or Phineas and Ferb, but with the educational value of like the magic school bus and more of that family friendliness. Got it. Yeah. Now let's talk about the investment side for a minute because that's fascinating. We talk a lot about real estate syndication and crowdfunding and those kinds of things. Yes. You were able to raise enough money to do this series. Uh -huh. uh, and how does that work for the investor's point of view? What's the economic model? So we did a minimum of $100 that they would need to invest. Okay. And then the show, if when the show succeeds, the investor succeeds. But first off, we have to make our investors whole to 120% of their investment. So if they okay. put in $100 before we ever pay ourselves out any profit, we have to pay them $120 back yep. on their investment. And then once the show is succeeding and um, either paying out some sort of dividend or being bought out in some way, you know, either being sold, then the profit distributions are pro rata. So just based on the number of shares that they that they purchased um, in the company itself. And the financial model is attractive with kids shows because 70% of revenue ends up coming from merchandising. On, on That's across the board on kids shows, that's an average. Yeah. Like if you, when you look at um, properties like Toy Story or Cars, 
they really are just kind of ads for the toys <laughs> because it's like the the box office numbers are like less than 10 percent of the overall overall revenue i mean we're talking billions and billions and billions of dollars and very small amounts of that actually being box office compared to what they've done in the way of the merchandising. So merchandising is is one angle, selling the show outright or subscription. Yes. How, what's the other economic way yeah, that the so show our functions? Our distributor is Angel Studios. Yeah. And um, so we're partnered with them on distribution. But yeah, we can license the the content out to other distributors. And so uh, do it in the way of, of a licensing payment or eventually sell DVDs. That, that can be another portion. Of it. And then also we'll be selling the books that right. the, that the um, series is based off to begin with. And so that'll all be part of the economic model that goes into it. But yeah, it's, when, when it comes out, it's going to be free. People can watch it for free on the app. That'll be downloadable on the App Store or on Google Play, either one. And you can watch the episodes for free. But then there's a pay it forward model. And what that means is you don't have to, but if you want to, after you've watched it, you feel like it's worth it, you can pay it forward so other people can watch it for free. God. That's shown itself to be very successful with a series called The Chosen, which is based on the life of, of Christ. It's the first multi-season TV show about the life of Christ, and they've been very successful and raised millions and millions and millions of dollars on those pay it forwards of people just wanting to spread the word. Now, kids want to be entertained, and most of them have access to devices today. What's the feedback you're getting from parents? The parents find it almost as educational as the kids. <laughs> In many cases, when you distill things down to concepts, metaphors, and analogies that work for kids, it ends up becoming more clear than ever for adults, too. And that's what they find all the time with the books, is that they'll buy them for the kids, they'll read them, the kids will like them, but then they're like, man, I'm learning more than I ever have with this. I'm understanding this better than ever. And that's where a, a format like a TV, a TV show or a cartoon comes in, is it really um, helps cement some of these concepts for adults that maybe they've kind of always sort of inherently believed it, but then haven't really known how to explain it in a way to their neighbor or their friend of why they think the way they do. Well, that's really the success of the books is taking these somewhat complex principles yeah. and distilling it down to easy to understand even for somebody young yeah. to start planting those seeds. So cool stuff. Well, congratulations. How do people learn more? If they'll go to TuttleTwins.tv, so T-U-T-T-L-E Twins.tv, they can you know put in their email and get on our list so that we can um, send them a notification when the um, the app becomes available for download for free or when it's available like on YouTube and Facebook for free. And so, yeah, that's the best way to do it, TuttleTwins.tv. All right, well, continued success. Thanks for being on the program. Thanks for having me. To tune to the Real Estate Guys radio program, we're at Freedom Fest in South Dakota when we come back. Hi, this is Chris Martinson, author of Prosper, and you are listening to the Real Estate Guys. When it comes to successful rental property investing, it pays to be picky. Pick the right markets, pick profitable properties, and pick great property management. That's easier said than done, but we've got great news. Jerry Kerr and his rock star team at Mid-South Home Buyers are going strong in Memphis, Tennessee, and Little Rock, Arkansas, too. So for a top-notch turnkey single-family home rental property, whether you're a new investor or have a large portfolio already, pick Terry Kerr and Mid-South for a truly A-plus investing experience. To learn more, send an email to Mid-South at realestateguysradio.com. That's Mid-South at realestateguysradio.com. If you're among the millions of people who've recently purchased a firearm, but you've never been professionally trained, this is your chance to get four full days of world-class professional training for free. Owning a gun is a personal choice and is a serious responsibility. We're firearms training advocates, and we believe the safest gun owners are those properly trained in the safe, responsible handling of their firearm. And if you own a gun for personal defense, a life or death situation is not the time to discover your skills under pressure are lacking. For a limited time, we're offering a four-day defensive handgun training course at the premier firearms training school in the country, a $2,000 value for free. You pay only for your ammo and a $50 background check fee. This course has helped thousands of students go from nervous beginner to skilled marksman on par with law enforcement and military in just four days. To claim your free firearms training course, simply send your email request to gunsafety at realestateguysradio.com. That's gun safety at realestateguysradio.com. Terms and conditions apply. Hi, this is Anthony Mercury from Hotel Impossible, and you're listening to The Real Estate Guys. Welcome back to The Real Estate Guys radio program. Thanks for tuning into the show today. Tell a friend about The Real Estate Guys. If you're struggling to find vision, passion, and purpose, then come on out to create your future, our goals retreat, 
Happens the first full weekend of January in Lake Las Vegas, Nevada. All the details on the website at realestateguysradio.com under events. We're talking today about the changes in education, in the ways that it's administered, in the perceptions people have, and most importantly, what the future may look like and how you can be part of it. Before we introduce you to some additional guests, it's time to play Real Estate Trivia. That's your chance to win a prize by knowing today's Real Estate Trivia question, which will have something to do with our topic. As soon as you hear the question and think you know the answer, send your best guess to trivia at realestateguysradio.com. Trivia at realestateguysradio.com. Send us your answer to the question, your name, and your physical mailing address because the first person that gets it right is going to get an awesome book called The One Thing That Changed Everything, a collection of inspiring and motivating stories. You're going to dig it. That can be yours if you know today's real estate trivia question. Last week we were here in South Dakota at Freedom Fest and we actually took some time to go up and see Mount Rushmore. Here was our trivia question. Mount Rushmore took 14 years to carve at a cost of just about a million dollars. What was the mountain called before the faces of our presidents were carved into the side of it? Well, the answer is the Mountain of Rock. Yeah, they called it the Mountain of Rock until it was transformed into today what we call Mount Rushmore. And after all these years, it's still impressive. Here's our real estate trivia question for this week. We're talking about education. Name the oldest college in the United States. Yeah, what's the oldest college in the United States? Seems like a simple question, but it certainly is a real estate question because that college is located somewhere. If you know where, send your best guess to trivia at realestateguysradio.com. Trivia at realestateguysradio.com. Give us your name, your mailing address, and the answer to the question. First person that gets it right gets this awesome book, The One Thing That Changed Everything. That's today's real estate trivia question. We're talking today about the changing landscape of education. We've talked about some of the things for young kids. Now let's transition into middle school and high school kids from Rapid City, South Dakota. Hi, I'm Steve Forbes. You're listening to The Real Estate Guys. Listen up. Welcome back to The Real Estate Guys radio program. Now in our 25th year of broadcast, we're talking about the changing nature and face of education used to be that uh, everybody got up and went to school and tried to get a job and our friend Robert Kiyosaki kind of broke that mold with Rich Dad Poor Dad and today what's happening is the way that kids are learning is changing. I want to introduce you to a gentleman that uh, we just met, John Foster. How are you? Very well, Robert. How are you today? I'm great and uh, tell us about Middle School MBA. This is an amazing idea. Yeah, so Middle School MBA, we're, uh, we teach exactly as the name implies. We teach graduate level business and economics to middle school kids. So we've, we've taken economics and made it so simple and so intuitive, nothing is dumbed down. This is graduate level stuff, things, uh, price structure, capital structure, things you wouldn't normally hear about until grad school, and we're delivering it to kids 10, 11, 12 years old. Wow, and you know what's amazing? Kids are interested in this stuff. They love it. You know, they, they used to ask me all the time, why is this class so fun? Why is this class so fun? And I used to blow that off but then one day I said, why are they asking me this? And it's because when they see economics this way, th their world becomes clear. All of these crazy one-off random transactions around them make sense. And, and it's very comforting. And, and so they interpret that as fun. You know, they, they love it. It's their favorite. It is always every kid's favorite class, every yeah. school we go to. Well, and let's talk about how it works because you do work through schools to get this curriculum out there. That's really part of the magic is that we do this using the teacher at the school. We use your teacher in your school who, who typically has no background in business and economics at all. Right. And we still drop in overnight. So the teacher can get credentialed today and be teaching full bore economics tomorrow. Now, MBA sounds like it's really intense and takes a lot of time, but how long does it take to go through the program with these kids? It's a total of 25 hours. So one hour a day in five weeks, your kids have an executive MBA. Wow. It's incredibly fast, super, super efficient in terms of classroom time. And everybody loves it. Everybody feels like they're punching above their weight. The teachers, the kids, everybody loves this. Now, John, share with us some of the concepts and some of the ideas and the way that you engage uh, middle school kids, because they got a lot going on and many of them are spending their days on 
their screens and all that. How do you get their attention and then maybe some of the methodology that gets them engaged? Well, first of all, you know, we live in this, this commercial ocean all around us. And for them to see how that works, it's interesting right away. They're like, it grabs their attention. Yeah. And then we, we go into specific, we drill down into business concepts. We always start with a simple concrete business thing, buy low, sell high, everybody yeah. gets that. And then we build from there to the abstraction, supply and demand, which is economics. So we start with a simple business thing and we build to economics. So the, and the whole thing is integrated. So they do, they negotiate with each other to discover prices, very, very realistic negotiations. Um, and they get extremely sophisticated. We've broken down the process so that the teacher takes them through next best option and how to challenge the other person's time and even playing good cop, bad cop. I mean, very sophisticated negotiations that these little kids do. And obviously they love that. But then along the way we say, okay, this is price discovery. This is how prices are discovered. Yeah. And then we go, here's how these prices fit into the price structure in the economy. And here's how that drives the capital structure over time. I mean, we have 12 year olds that can tell you how price structure drives capital structure. Now, how did this come about? How did you decide to do this and tell us how the program came together? I'm glad you asked that because, and that's why we're so happy to be debuting our, our model, which we call Linky here yeah. at Freedom Fest because Mark Skousen's book, um, The Structure of Production, I read that book 15 years ago, yeah. and, and sort of the impetus of the book is, none of these models are any good. You know, hiking triangles are, are hard to understand, the circular flow diagram is ridiculous, and so they're, they're really no good models. And so I said, well, there's got to be something. So I built the Linky model yeah, that so we tell, use. Tell us about the Linky model because this is really interesting. The Linky model follows an Austrian structure. Yeah. It's it's all super intuitive. Um, you know, our the game is we're taking natural resources and converting them into products. Right. And we do that step by step. Each step is a business. Each business has capital. And, and due to that capital, they hire specialized workers that can use that capital. Yep. All very intuitive. I mean, 12 year olds understand this. Yeah. But when you put it all together in a 3D model where you can see it and see everything connected, it's just there, they just have it. So it's, it's, it's like a no miss. That's how we use teachers who, who know nothing about this stuff. And everybody gets a different worldview. The kids and the teachers yeah. suddenly have a totally different worldview and this appreciation for the whole commercial world and businesses and, and the, the constraints on economics. Most people learn about finances and economics from their parents and not everybody's parents were successful at learning that or even successful at figuring out uh, that, that part of their life. And so having these kind of tools are awesome. How do you get into the schools? Is that at a district level? a state level how do you find schools that are willing to bring this curriculum in well it, it's typically on a, a one by one basis um, and then of course with referrals from other schools the what we do is is I get in front of a principal and I say middle school MBA and if their jaw drops they're my customer <laughs> if if they look perplexed then I say nice to meet you and I go find somebody else yeah but uh, it's the the principals who are ambitious for their kids and have have vision that that you know want the the best education the, that's the so we're in mostly private schools and charter schools and we do summer camps but we're all over the world we can drop into any classroom in the world overnight jim Rohn used to say that kids don't lack capacity they just lack teachers how many languages can a child learn as many as you'll teach them how many complex economic topics can they grasp as many as you'll teach them especially if the teacher is impassioned by it there is no doubt that the limit to what they can learn is us yeah. it is not them we've we said that from the beginning that's totally right and let's face it uh, today's middle schoolers are uh, tomorrow's leaders so this is fascinating stuff hey if you want to learn more about what they do at middle school mba just send an email to mba at realestateguysradio.com mba at realestateguysradio.com john great to have you on the program and continued success to you thank you robert really appreciate it you're tuned to the real estate guys radio program when we come back i'm your host robert helms Need help with your real estate investment portfolio? Check out the resources page at realestateguysradio.com. Are you achieving everything you want in life? 
What if there was a time-tested way for you to get all you've dreamed of? The most successful people in life set goals and keep themselves accountable. But how? The good news is that it's not rocket science. You too can learn the skills and unleash the motivation that will create success in your life. And now is the time. Hi, this is Robert Helms, and I'd like to personally invite you to attend Create Your Future, the 2022 Goals Retreat, January 7th to 9th in beautiful Lake Las Vegas, Nevada. This unique weekend event has been called phenomenal, inspirational, and life-changing by the thousands of people that have attended. Hear from some of them and find out more at realestateguysradio.com under events or call 888-489-7723, extension 18, to preserve your spot. Get your life back on track physically, spiritually, and financially. Attend the live in-person 2022 Goals Retreat on the second weekend of the new year. Click events at realestateguysradio.com to register. This is no dress rehearsal. Live the life you were meant to. Visit realestateguysradio.com or call 888-489-7723, extension 18, today. Hey, ever wished you could go back in time and do some tax planning? Now you can, just like Marty McFly. Lucky for you, a brand new federal law just made this possible with an EQRP to get tax deductions and reduce your taxable income from last year so you can use that tax savings to invest in real estate, Bitcoin, gold, even your own business. Whether you're a full-time investor, doctor, government employee, even if you have five or 50 employees, the EQRP works and is your secret weapon and now it's retroactive. Hey, I'm Damian Lupo and we have your solution. By the way, if you got bad advice and used an IRA for an apartment syndication, you are sitting on a U-bit time bomb. But don't worry, there's a solution, the EQRP. The EQRP company is ready to help you get control of your money, kill U-bit, and help you pay way less taxes. Want to learn more about this strategy? Send an email to EQRP at realestateguysradio.com for my special EQRP report. Paying tax or letting Wall Street suck you dry is dumb. Your first step is freeing your retirement money by sending an email to EQRP at realestateguysradio.com today. Hi, I'm Aaron Katusa, the chairman of Katusa Research. You're listening to The Real Estate Guys. Welcome back to The Real Estate Guys radio program. Now in our 25th year of broadcast, we're talking today about the changing face of education. And uh, we just stumbled into one of our listeners who's in this business. Let's say hi to Jared Taylor. Hey, Jared. Hey, it's sure great to be with you. Yeah, well, thanks for being a listener. That's awesome. And then tell us about what you do. This is phenomenally interesting. I am the chairman and CEO of Heritage Academy, which is in Arizona. And it's about four schools, junior high, high school, and we have roughly 3,000 students and absolutely love it. And we, we're called Heritage because we think America has something wonderful to offer and learn about as well. Well, you, we absolutely have to think that a charter school is an alternative, but no investor left behind. Um, ex explain how a charter school works. So a district school is publicly funded, publicly operated, and it's a public school. A charter school is also publicly funded, so therefore a public school, but it's privately operated. So yeah. it has a charter from the state of Arizona to do things, but it's still required to have the same graduation requirements and a lot of the other same requirements as, as public schools in Arizona. Now, one of the things we were talking about is this idea, and our friend Robert Kiyosaki talks about this all the time, that financial education is not taught in schools, but at your school it is. Tell us about that. It is. It is. And we have a really great partnership with the University of Arizona. They have the uh, number one ranked um, economics and ethics program in the world over Harvard and Oxford. It's out of their university, their philosophy department, if you can believe it. Wow. Uh, the Department of Philosophy of Freedom is what they call it. And they offer a high school curriculum that anyone can, can use yeah. that really marries three parts, economics, ethics, and entrepreneurship, which we love the marriage of those three ideas because one of the major problems, you know, a couple years ago, it seems like yesterday, but when WorldCom went down and Enron went down, yeah. it was largely a bunch of people that had, they didn't have an ethical basis for their decision making and lots of lives were ruined. Yeah. So when you start talking about financial literacy, if you start with the basis of economics and ethics and entrepreneurship together, I think you're starting off on the right foot. Now, this is actually a family business. So talk about the legacy of it and how it's grown over the years. Sure. You know, many years ago, the Goldwater Institute in Arizona were a major advocate for charter legislation. And Jeff Flake, former senator of Arizona, was the director at the time. He called my father, who was uh, running a little 
school. We've known the Flakes for years. They're great people. And they said, he said, hey, you need to come learn about this. So he went to this um, seminar and there's a couple hundred people there and they outlined charter legislation. It's just passed in Arizona. Governor Symington had signed it. And then someone said, all right, who's gonna do this? And everyone looked around the room and said, I don't know, who's gonna <laughs> do it? And, and no one really still understood what it all meant. Minnesota yeah. had just put it out. Anyways, he was the fourth person to get it. In the very first year, he rented a little room in the back of a Jewish synagogue and now 27 years later, we're here. I joined him about 10 years ago. I was doing large corporate work and loved it, but kind of got old and said, let's try something different. And so instead of making car parts and airplane parts, now we get to make young men and young women that are the future heroes of our country. That's what we're all about at Heritage. That is awesome. Now, since you're on the real estate guys, let's talk about the real estate aspect because we were just talking about the fact that you have to access capital this is private industry talk about that part of the business sure yeah that's very fascinating i i, I use the term charter 1.0 so when my father and many other people started they were just renting from churches or some older buildings yep and then um, under bill clinton they passed charter funding authorization which enabled charter schools to get uh, revenue bonds effectively and that created the second wave, what I call Charter 2.0. And that was, that's when you see a lot of charter schools network get into their own buildings. And uh, yeah, it's a fascinating area and it's a very niche market because when we go to a traditional uh, bank and ask for funding, they just look at us like we're strange because <laughs> right. they don't understand. It's kind well, of a funny model. It's 100% yeah. financing and there's no LTV on this. Yeah. And they say, what? You want $20 million for a new campus? And you're not going to put any any down no oh and can i get a little bit extra for all the desks and textbooks yeah. they think we're crazy but there is a growing very solvent uh stable market and there's people that understand this and it's just great to see how this choice market has expanded and you got to credit the people like frank riggs who was in congress back in the day and President Clinton, who signed this to make it all happen. All right, well, fascinating stuff, and uh, glad you stopped by. Thanks, Jared. You bet. Thank you. Glad to be here with you. You're tuned to the Real Estate Guys radio program. When we come back, I'm your host, Robert Helms. Hi, this is Darren Hardy, author of The Compound Effect, and you're listening to the Real Estate Guys. Hey, it's Robert Helms. Thanks so much for listening to the show today. I want to personally invite you to come see an amazing real estate market that combines excellent cash flow, offshore diversification, and what we affectionately call lifestyle investing. Come join me December 3rd through 6th in the beautiful country of Belize. The Real Estate Guys have been bringing investors to Belize for more than 15 years now, and our discovery trip is designed to show you the market like nobody else can. Sure, Belize is breathtakingly beautiful. The people are wonderful. And wait till you taste the food. But the real opportunity is the real estate investment potential. Demand for offshore real estate has skyrocketed since the coronavirus shutdown. And with retirees looking for lifestyle, the work from home workforce able to be productive from afar, and tourism coming back strong, now may be the perfect time to consider Belize as a place to diversify risk in your investment portfolio. There's all types of opportunity in Belize when it comes to real estate investing, including both long-term and short-term rentals, commercial and retail triple net properties, business opportunities, land acquisition, development, agriculture, and more. And as the only country in Latin America with English as its official language, it's easy to understand the law. Property rights are strong and contracts are in English. And in Ambergris Key, a unique situation exists where demand for rentals continues to outstrip supply, creating a compelling environment for investors. So come see for yourself. Join me in December in Ambergris Key, Belize, as we study the market, learn about the sustainable drivers, and tour lots of beautiful real estate. And like all of our field trips, there are no properties for sale during the weekend. Rather, you'll meet lots of local providers that will help educate you about the market so that you can follow up with them after the trip if the market is interesting to you. You've heard about Belize and the Real Estate Guys for all these years. Now come see what all the excitement is about. Plus, we'll have lots of time over meals and activities to talk about all things real estate. To get the details, go to the website at realestateguysradio.com and click on events where you'll find the Belize Discovery Trip. Once you register, you'll get information about our group hotel rates as well as full travel details. 
So join me in Belize December 3rd to 6th. It's a beautiful country with lots of amazing possibilities. And the only thing missing is you. Go to realestateguysradio.com under events. And I look forward to seeing you in beautiful Belize. Hi, this is Doug Casey, and you're listening to The Real Estate Guys. Welcome back to The Real Estate Guys radio program. Thanks for tuning into the show today, however you're doing that, whether it's the podcast or the radio or someone's just translating in your ear. Hey, if you want to figure out what you're going to do and be when you grow up and you aren't clear on your future, come on out to our 2022 Goals Retreat. It happens the first full weekend of the new year. All the details at realestateguysradio.com under events. We're talking about the changing role of education and my goodness, what a wide variety of folks we heard from today. Well, you know, it's funny. They say that necessity is the mother of invention and the essence of entrepreneurship is the idea that you see an unmet need in the marketplace and you step in and you meet it. You know, you heard Connor talk about how he went looking for curriculum to teach these economic concepts to young people, couldn't find anything. So he said, well, you know what? I'm going to create that and lo and behold it it was a big itch that the uh, marketplace had and he's turned it into a nice little business for himself and that's really the idea of understanding that's what's going on right now and 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 people are in need of it you know kisaki struck a huge nerve greatest selling book in financial history personal finance rich dad poor dad and it, it's really rooted on the idea of like nobody's teaching this stuff in school how many of us have graduated from whatever level of school and gone into the real world and found out that a lot of the education that we got doesn't really work in the real world. It isn't really relevant or the language or the terms or the methodologies in theory are very different when you get in the real world. I'm not saying that classroom education isn't worth something. It is, but it's not the finishing point. At best, it's a launching pad. Well, look at what John's doing, right? At middle schools, going into middle schools, not circumventing or disrupting middle schools, but going into classrooms, even virtual classrooms, and teaching this compact middle school MBA. And those are the financial concepts that Robert Kiyosaki talked about not being taught in school. And now through an entrepreneurial spirit, they are being taught in some schools. Well, and that's what needs to happen. And this is the whole point, right? If you realize that there's something missing and you can find a way to fill that gap, that's important. It starts out with you just looking at what needs to be done and how important is money. I mean, if you think about it, right, how many people spend how much of their time getting up every day working for money, then managing money, reporting on money, uh, spending money, investing money. Money is a big, big deal. And money and your ability to make it, whether as an employee or a self-employed person or a business owner or an investor, all lives inside of a bigger ecosystem called the economy and the financial system. And those are governed by policies. And how do you recognize good or bad policies and their impact on your bottom line, right? People are Experience inflation right now. There's concerns about stagflation. Inflation is your best friend if you know how to use it, right? That's what equity happens is all about. Real estate investors love inflation. If you're on the wrong end of it, it's devastating. And so what's the difference? Education, understanding what's happening in the context of what's happening and what to do in response to it. And when that's not being taught in the conventional sources for education, then people begin to wake up and realize, hey, I need to go look for answers someplace else. That's why the Real Estate Guys radio show exists and many others like it. That's why we have a whole investment program and there's many other people that are doing that. These are all private enterprises that have stepped up to fill the gap. And it's so refreshing to see it happening all the way down to the elementary school level. You know, you mentioned context. And that is so critical. Back when I was teaching appraisal and real estate principles at the college level, I didn't teach from the textbook. I mean, sure, we had a textbook and we had to administer tests and all those things. But I taught from the perspective of having sold real estate a long time and having been involved with transactions and appraisals forever. And rather than talk in the classroom about construction methodology for appraisal, we had a field trip. We went to one of our projects and we walked through it with our foreman and we pointed and we looked and they asked questions and the context changed completely. When you're standing in a property, seeing what's being improved, seeing what's being built, how it's done, who's doing it, understanding the metrics and the money behind it, very different than sitting there looking at a picture of a house on a chalkboard. Yeah, well, that's why mentorship is so important because you're learning in the real world. And when you can't get that or you're not ready for that, then the next best thing is games. 
That's why, you know, Kiyosaki talks all the time about how he learned by playing Monopoly and how that experience really inspired him to create cash flow, which is one of the great games for learning accounting and understanding what a balance sheet, a financial statement is, how cash flow and assets work together to create wealth and financial independence, right? He took Monopoly, which was a good game, and he created cash flow, which is a great game to take the business of learning how to think like an investor to a tactical level where you actually experience it, not just intellectualize it. And that's why it's such a powerful tool. Jim Rohn said that Formal education will make you a living and self-education will make you a fortune. What you learn after you leave traditional school is really what makes the difference. And so we would just encourage you to continue learning. And a big thanks to the folks that share with us today, Connor, Daniel, John, Jared, they're all out there in their own way helping to change the face and the course of education. And it's the pebble in the water. When you affect somebody in a way that's positive to them through education, then they can be the catalyst for a lot of change beyond that. If you want to get educated, well, check out where the real estate guys are going. Next stop, the New Orleans Investment Conference. We're going to be in New Orleans for that annual awesome event. We've gotten educated about lots of topics over the years at that conference, and now we teach there as well. So come on out to that. We've got our syndication event coming up in March, The Secrets of Successful Syndication. If for whatever reason you're being outsized or you're choosing to move on in career right now and you've got some real estate experience, syndication might be something to think about. Yeah, absolutely. It's the ultimate convergence of investing and entrepreneurism, and it's a natural evolution for a real estate investor to go to the next level. And today there's more and more people trying to find alternatives to Wall Street and stocks and bonds as a place to grow wealth. And real estate is still a great answer for that. And you know we can make the case for why that is, but if it's something you're interested in and the idea of like, hey, I could do a lot more if I just had more money, Trust me, they've been printing trillions of dollars. There's a lot of money out there looking for good management, good good investments. Syndication is about putting money together with good deals, and it's a great, great business to be in. Find out more, go to the website at realestateguysradio.com and click on the button that says events. Big thanks to Mark Skousen and the team from Freedom Fest for their hospitality and collecting all these amazing folks to have these discussions this week. Next week on the show, we're going to talk about making the jump from a single family or small unit investor up to the big leagues. We've got a great guest. Until then, go out and make some equity happen. This episode of the Real Estate Guys radio show is brought to you by Paradigm Life. Powerful cash management strategies using life insurance. Learn more at beyourbank.com. Mid-South Home Buyers. Low cost, turnkey cash flow properties in Memphis, Tennessee. Corporate Direct. Asset protection strategies for real estate investors from attorney and rich dad advisor Garrett Sutton. Find these and other great companies under the resources tab at realestateguysradio.com. To learn how you can expose your product or service to the Real Estate Guys audience, call 888-489-7723, extension 4. That's 888-489-7723, extension 4. Or use the feedback page at realestateguysradio.com. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week right here on the Real Estate Guys Radio Show.